I've talked about roughly 66 comic book movies in this bracket so far with a solid 30 or so left to go before things get real interesting. There's a surprising amount of good movies in this episode with of course some real shit shows mixed in for good measure. Let's feud! Which one of these movies has the best standoff performance can be a bit of a burden, especially when there's so many good ones to be had. Natalie Portman proves she can deliver when given a good script and direction, and of course Hugo Weaving as V himself puts everyone else in the room to shame. Angelina Jolie is at her finest and wanted, playing an assassin named Fox. Freeman is always fantastic, and a young Professor X makes for a strong lead. As a bonus, we get a young Chris Pratt taking a keyboard to the face like a champ. Constantine was an interesting film to say the least. I'm not sure I enjoyed it since it's been many years since I hit it up in theaters. Keanu Reeves can do no wrong in my book though, and a little Shia goes a long way. A lot of Shia can just go away. It Girl Rachel Weisz is always fun to watch on screen. What the hell happened to her anyways? Did the whole cast of The Mummy just fall off the planet? If only there was a technology I could harness that would figure this answer out for me. We'll just never know. The newest film on the list would be Doctor Strange starring Benedict Cumberbatch as the title card. He's rich, smart, and witty, which is a real nice change of pace from all the other Marvel characters who are rich, smart, and witty. Sarcasm aside, Cumberbatch never disappoints. Same can be said for Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One. One of my many brides from another life, Rachel McAdams, plays the love interest. She's standard fare here, but the important takeaway is my name is inside her last name. Adam. McAdams. Part of me is inside her. And that, that gets me out of bed in the morning. My wife hasn't watched this show in years. The Rocketeer, oh the memories I don't have because I have the memory equivalent of an Atari 2600. I haven't seen the film since I was a wee young Mexican orphan. So sorry if things are cloudy up top. I remember it has Jennifer Connelly in it, so this round already has its winner. Billy Campbell plays the jetpack wearing hero, who would later go on to star in such critically acclaimed films like Enough, starring Jennifer Lopez. Terry O'Quinn apparently was in this too, according to IMDb. Now unfortunately I'm thinking of that piece of shit TV show Lost and all the years it took off my life. Just relax Adam, we can't go back. Can't go back to the island. Show of hands class, who here remembers Spawn, The Phantom, or The Shadow? Follow up, who remembers them fondly? I hope there are no hands up because these movies suck. To be fair, I didn't see The Green Hornet, but seeing as it is 2016, we don't actually have to go out and watch films. We just need to see headlines to know what the article is or the, the trailer to know how a film turns out, right? Christopher Waltz is in it, so maybe it's not all bad. Uh, I'm guessing Seth Rogen makes pot jokes. Since it appears he's contractually obligated to in every single film he's ever been in. It's got Cameron Diaz, but I'll just rewatch The Mask when she's in her prime to, to see a little Diaz. Speaking of green things, Billy Zane's a cool dude. Just not when he's dressed in purple. Really botch that segue. In The Phantom, he has a power ring that allows him to do superhero stuff. Basically a poor man's Green Lantern. And speaking of Green Lantern, Nailed it. I felt bad for Ryan Reynolds, I truly did. After this movie bombed so badly, what the hell did he have left? Besides devilishly good looks, millions of dollars in the bank account, a smoking hot wife, and adoring fans all over the world, he was basically an empty shell of a man. The Shadow is perhaps the most forgettable film I've ever seen. Granted, I did watch it right before Forrest Gump, which also came out in that year, with Shawshank Redemption and Pulp Fiction. Basically, if you signed up to be in The Shadow, you fucked yourself. Outside of Alec Baldwin, I couldn't remember who was in this, so I checked out IMDb. Apparently, Peter Boyle, Tim Curry, and Sir Ian McKellen all have roles here. John Leguizamo, um... I'm pretty convinced Spawn ruined his career. He's, he's slowly now kind of making his way back up. I saw him, he was in John Wick for a little bit, a couple other films. Either that or it was The Pest. Regardless, he plays a fat psycho clown demon thing facing Michael Jai White as Spawn. I caught it one night on HBO many years ago when I was waiting for some softcore adult porn to start up. After the film was done, I wasn't even in the mood. Holy hell, we're just getting around two. I feel like I've already talked for hours, uh, so speed things up, I will. Hey, Crystal, you, you did the cards for this episode. Is there any reason you made me sound like Yoda there? 
Why, why are we doing an offhand random Star Wars reference on an episode that has completely nothing to do with Star Wars? Oh, this is a movie channel, so everything's fair game if it's, if, if it's in relation to movies? Is that what you're thinking, Crystal? Hey, here, here's, here's one for you. Fired you are. Get the fuck out. There's no way I'm breaking down these plots. Instead, I'm gonna brush over them with a nice stroke of my, my brush, okay. Brush twice in the same sentence, I'm glad I fired her. V for Vendetta is all about those down with big government, anti-establishment feels. It also gave internet douchebags the perfect mask to wear when trolling. Wanted has one of the most perplexingly dumb concepts ever. Having something to do with reading fabric to see who to put a hit on. I suppose when one of the main ideas of the film is curving bullets, you have to just walk away from your brain on all fronts. I still love the shit out of this movie. In Spawn, Al Simmons makes a deal with the devil to return to Earth as long as he leads an army of Hellspawn. He flips the script and fights for the good guys. This pisses off a demon clown and shit goes south fast. Speaking of hell, the Rocketeers having one hell of a time fighting off these Nazis in this Dave Stevens action period adventure flick. I really feel like I'm screwing up the segues. Constantine is about demons too. In fact, Constantine also takes a trip to hell and back. And no, I don't mean he went to Florida. <laughs> Cause Florida's the worst. He has a first class ticket back to that fiery prison when he dies, unless he can chalk up enough brownie points with the guy upstairs. Doctor Strange is basically the plot of Iron Man, but with a doctor. Instead of building an awesome suit, he unlocks his mind's eye in what seems like a weekend. And that's all the further I'm going with plots. I can't bother to care about the rest of the movies on this list. If you like them, I have no idea why. We're going to round three. V for Vendetta, not directed by the Wachowskis, but they produced the shit out of it. The style is definitely felt, and Portman with a shaved head is oddly arousing. It brings me back to that wild, hot summer camp fling I had with one of the counselors. Garrett was surprisingly gentle. Wanted is all about the style. I would credit the director here, but I can't pronounce his name. And that's not a slight on the director. That's because I can't pronounce names worth a shit. The effects are lavish and cartoony, but not in a cheesy way. And Jolie never looks more comfortable than she does committing mass murder. It just feels right. Spawn looks like AIDS. I don't know what AIDS looks like, but if someone asked me what AIDS looks like, I would hand them a copy of Spawn and say, that's what AIDS looks like. Why do I have a copy of Spawn, you ask? That's a question for another time. One I will refuse to answer. There was a whole lot of nothing there, wasn't it? Doctor Strange is a visual tapestry of colorful and trippy effects. We've seen buildings bend and break before, but it's almost show-offy here. I'm not sure what asshole thought Green Lantern at one point in time had too many colors and they should have scaled back to green, but that person should be fired. Never has a movie taken the word green so literally before. The whole damn movie's green. The thing is a cartoon, which is insulting to good cartoons everywhere. Rocketeer is a period film which helps it in the effects department. Obviously it's dated as fuck and chock full of camp, but because of the setting and light tone, it fares pretty well. Constantine is a nicely directed movie. Hell is pretty awesome and I wish more time was spent there. The movie reaches a much higher level of excitement whenever he heads back. The Green Hornet and the Phantom, I don't even have anything to say, I don't care. V for Vendetta, Wanted, and Doctor Strange all have pretty great soundtracks and musical scores. Did I cover all of them? The Shadow. See, that movie's so forgettable I even forgot I put it on my list. I remember that he has like a slicker and a hat and there's a point where two bullets get shot out of guns and they collide. That was cool. The bullets kind of like ripple in. I'm sure it looks like shit now. I'm calling it. Let's go to conclusion. The winner here is between three movies for me personally. V for Vendetta, Wanted, and Doctor Strange. If I had to pick, which I do by law, I'm going with Wanted. I think it's creative, it's different, it's action packed, it's fun, and I love, I love violence. I really do. Uh, Doctor Strange feels comfortable, but normal. V for Vendetta is definitely different. I feel like it needed just a bit more um, oomph in certain, in certain spots. So I'm going Wanted. I'm guessing Strange will get the majority vote being the sexy new girl in class, but let's not forget the seductive foreign exchange student V with her pretty dialect and adult commentary. Wanted is the bad girl in school. She's always up for a good time and won't disappoint in the sack. That metaphor seems extremely appropriate considering Angelina Jolie is the lead female. She seems just like that person. All right, you should know the drill by now. Vote for your winner, comment, and remember this is more than just reviews, this is movie feuds. And for the seven of you left still, uh, if I have your attention at all, 
uh, thank you for watching first off. And let's get a little bit more social out there. You'll notice in the comments that I reply often, unlike a lot of YouTubers, I like to engage, be part of this channel. I'd appreciate if you could do the same for me. Go on Instagram or, or Twitter or Facebook or wherever the hell the kids are using these days. Uh, post my channel around, put it on Reddit or the subreddits or whatever the underground reddits. I don't use Reddit, I don't know how it works. Do, do, do a video about my channel. Just do something to get my name out there. Uh, because I would do it for you in a heartbeat. And that's a lie you can take to the bank. <laughs>